Hi, everybody. I am Ed Carrada. I'm with Hewlett Packard Enterprise Aruba Networking. I'm one of the subject matter experts when it comes to the transceivers and interconnectivity products. I'm part of the product management team here. Hi, I am Anand Tanwar, technical marketing engineer with HP Aruba Networking. First, you need to understand that there are three types of interconnects that we currently have. The first one is, as you can see on my screen right now, is a direct attached copper cable. Now, what's it? In this, in the direct attached copper cable, you have transceivers connected on either side of a copper cable. This is how uh, it comes with the by default attached cable. Coming to the AOC, it's similar structure to the direct attached copper cable, but in this case, you have the cable with the optical fiber and the transceivers on the each end are connected to it by default and support optical cable. Now coming to the third one, which is the most interesting one, a modular interconnect, which is a transceiver, a connector and a transmission cable. Now to understand, I have already highlighted the categories we have in all these three things. So Anani is talking about DAC cables, direct attached copper cables. This is an example of one of them. A direct attached copper cable is a passive cable. It's copper wire here from point to point. Now this looks like a transceiver, but it fits into the transceiver slot, but it really just makes an electrical connection from the switch end to the copper cable to the other opposite end of the cable. Now, SFP, small form factor pluggables, 10 gig, 25 gig, 50 gig, they all look very similar. This is a 10 gig cable, this is a 50 gig cable. They look exactly the same. This is a 40 gig DAC cable. A 40 gig has a different size transceiver end, and that makes it larger. And this is this cable is thicker because at 40 gig speeds, it has to have more copper to be able to do that same length. This 50 gig cable was a short cable, so that's why it's thinner. If I had a five gig, five meter 50 gig cable, it would be thicker, almost as thick as this 40 gig cable here. You can see the size difference there. Now, when we talked about also active optical cables, active optical, unlike unlike a DAC. DAC direct attach. It's the optical part of it here. It's very similar to a transceiver with a permanently attached fiber cable. It's permanently attached. That was another one of the examples. And then the last example that Anani talked about was having a transceiver which has a port on it. And then you take a fiber cable with its connector and you insert the fiber cable into this. So this gets inserted into the switch. The fiber cable gets inserted into the transceiver. And that's what makes your long distance connection to the other side. Hey, uh, can I insert my SFP transceiver in QSFP port? I mean, it's similar. Well, you'd, you'd think, think that a transceiver port, port is a transceiver port, port, but they're not. So this is a small form factor pluggable, an SFP transceiver. It's typically for like the one gig, 10 gig, all the way up to our 50 gig transceivers, but they're the exact same size. When you got to 40 gig technology, they use a QSFP transceiver. It's a little bit different size. It's a little bit wider, and it's certainly a lot longer in terms of its length. More, more electronics, higher speed stuff is in here, 40 gig. You'd wonder how did we get to 50 gig in such a small form factor? Well, the technology advanced after time. Don't forget that the standards actually went from 100 megabit, one gigabit, 10 gigabit. It leaped to 40 gigabit, and then 50 gigabit came away, came afterwards. So this, trust me, by the time the 50 gig technology came, things had improved so they could get them into a small form factor. Don't forget too, that electronics that go into these things have to do a lot of work. It's one of the reasons why the LRM transceiver needs extra support in the switch to be able to support LRM because it used to be a larger form factor 10 gig transceiver because all the LRM circuitry was in here. Well, now the LRM circuitry got, set, got put onto the switch. And if the switch doesn't have it, you can't support an LRM transceiver at all. The hardware is just not there. It's what's called an error dispersion correction circuitry. Now, can you put an SFP into a QSFP slot? Because they're very, very different sizes. The answer is sort of. Because you actually sell an adapter, a QSFP adapter, that is basically a shell that is the size of a QSFP. And then you take your SFP optic and you slide it into the adapter itself and it fits into the QSFP. 
That doesn't always guarantee things because the port itself has to be able to support the transceiver that you're looking at. 40 gig ports don't typically support one gig speeds. But remember how I mentioned about the SR4, which is four channels of 10 gig? Ah, you can put a 40 gig port and slide a 10 gig transceiver into that port. Excellent. You can take a 100 gig port and slide a 10 gig or a 25 gig transceiver in there because the 100 gig port might have all the right circuitry at the back to be able to translate back down to a 10 gig link or a, or a 25 gig link. Some customers have asked me, can I take my 100 gig port, QSIP port, and split it off into two separate 50 gig ports? And the answer is not really, because if your 40 gig, if your 100 gig port is designed for four channels of 25, we don't have anything that can actually take two channels of 25 and gang them into 50 gig. That's not how it works. A 50 gig transceiver is typically, you know, basically two fibers, one channel of 50 gig on each, one channel transmitting, one channel receiving. We'll get into a different technology where we'll talk about the difference between what's called NRZ, non-return to zero, versus PAM4 technology. And that's how you get double the bandwidth, even though you're only still running at a lower um, signaling rate optically. PAM4 stands for four, four pulse amplitude modulations. NRZ stands for non-return to zero, which basically is just ones and zeros. But we'll get into that in a separate session or maybe a couple of slides from now, Anani. All right, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ed. Actually, that clears out my confusion.